Hi, in this video I'm going to um, talk about the evolution of side pods in uh, Formula 1. And uh, side pods started with the, in 1970 with the Lotus 72. And these were very simple, a very simple affair, basically something like that. And uh, you would have the, you had the front wheel here and air going through here. And you'd have you'd have two coolers, oil and water coolers, situated in the side pod. Here's the rear wheel, and you'd have the coolers as said here, one side and the other side of the car. You'd have another pod, and uh, air would go through here and out of here. So that's the way. It started with side pods. Before that, cars had no side pods. I mean, the cars of the 60s were basically more like bath bathtubs. And from the front, they looked like that. You'd have the wheel here. Here's another wheel. Okay, and the cooler. Here's the guy, the driver sitting there. And the cooler was really here at the front of that bathtub. Uh, drawn three-dimensionally, it would look like that. And here's the cockpit. And you'd have the cooler situated right here in the front area of the, of the car. Uh, the Lotus 72, they wanted to uh, have a better performance of the, uh, better and aerodynamically better performing nose, and they used to build a wedge shape nose. And that wedge shape, well, that did not allow the placement of any coolers, so they placed their coolers on the side in so called side pods. And those side pods, evolved uh, from the 70s till uh, 77 they evolved in different forms some manufacturers used big side pods uh, like the, like the ferraris uh, of uh, 74 till uh, you know 79 then you'd have some short pods like the mclaren's m23 they had some short pods similar to the lotus's pods and uh, others didn't have any pods like the Brabham, the Brabham BD44, for instance, had still had its uh, its uh, its coolers in the nose, and it had a very wide nose. So basically, the nose of the Brabham looked like that, just as a sketch, and the coolers were placed here on the side. Ah, that's bad. Something like that. That's that's the front nose, and then you'd have the coolers situated on each side, and that, that state of affairs went on until 1977 when Lotus again pioneered a new car and that is the wing car, the Lotus 78. With the Lotus 78, the pods had to go. You had here the rear wheel. Okay. And here's the front wheel. And the pod was something like that. It went along the whole wheelbase of the car for a very simple reason and that is that pod housed a wing profile in it which pressed the car down. The wing profile wasn't visible from the outside but that's why I'm gonna draw it dotted. The wing profile went like that and air was going under the car and exiting here and that air was pressing the car down and generating this 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 massive downforce which gave the cars um, a better ability to handle turns especially fast turns because they basically in those turns they basically stuck to the road or to the track and uh, that gave them much higher speeds than the normal cars which didn't have any any of those wing profiles at the bottom now, that wing profile necessitate, necessitated that the, the nose of the car was very slim. So you had a very slim, you had to have a very slim nose here because a wide nose like that of the Brabham would disturb that airflow going to that all important um, wing profile. So, so the Lotus 70, uh, that was the Lotus uh, 78 uh, in 1977. Let me just write it here, Lotus. And that uh, that that wing, uh, like I said, required a, a very narrow car, and um, th uh, 
that's why you couldn't have any coolers in the in the nose and stuff like that it, you had to have a very slim nose and the air went below the side pod it, uh, along that wing profile to generate downforce and into the side pod to hit the coolers which were situated like this and in the pods themselves you also had the outlets where air went out from the side it looked like that here's the cooler air went like this and then in the pot you'd have something like this where the exhaust air from the cooler went out on top of the pot and then went along the top of the pot to the back and that's the way uh, that's uh, uh, this this uh, wing car the Lotus 79 and then the subsequent car the Lotus 79 in 1978 which produced ground effects which is basically a, a, I'm just gonna say a better wing uh, concept uh, I've got these uh, items discussed in another video and uh, that too that Lotus 79 also required a very slim car and the side pods went from uh, along the whole length of the wheelbase and uh, thus all manufacturers after 78 had the same type of parts very long parts with a wing profile at the bottom and the coolers inside and in the 80s early 80s what happened is that the coolers were placed like that not vertically but inclined So that's your cooler and air would come here and exhaust at the top and you'd have sometimes a flap here to accelerate a sort of a mini wing profile to accelerate that exhaust air out and thus improve cooling and here that's the, the exhaust air would go along along the top of the pod to, to the back okay now ground effects and wing cores they stayed from 1978 till 1982. From 83 onwards, ground effects were not allowed and side pods uh, evolved in one of two shapes. One shape was pioneered by Brabham, now we're in 1983. One shape was the Brabham BT-52 and that had delta pods. They look something like that. Okay, and then it went like this. And here's the rear wheel. And here you had one cooler. Okay. And on the other side you had another cooler. And that was the delta shape. So basically what Brabham did, here's, let's say, if, I'm just going to push that down a bit. Let's say if we have the front wheel over here. So what Brabham did, they just got rid of the whole pod area. This is here the, the cockpit. This is where the driver sits. Here's his roll bar or anti-roll bar. So basically what they did, a very slim car, no side pods, except at the back they had this delta, this, this, this uh, uh, arrow shaped uh, uh, mini pod at the back where you have the, the, the coolers, the engine, etc. So basically, a, you can say a podless car. Another car which did that in 83, by the way, was Ligier. Ligier. I forgot the type number. I think, uh, could it be 21 or something like that? Uh, they had the same concept, basically, but much smaller pods than the Brabham BT-52. The BT-52 won the championship in 83. That car, the Ligier, was, uh, was basically a flop. Another concept that, that uh, appeared in 83 was McLaren's concept. And McLaren's concept was basically they took the normal side pod, the normal side pod as it was, and it, what they did, they tapered it at the back. So it went like that. Wait a minute, I don't like the looks of it. Let me do that better. So it went like that. That. 
That's not, that's not a part, a normal section. And then you do that, and then it would taper off like that. Okay? Yeah, much better. Okay. So the McLaren pad was like that. Here's the rear wheel. Okay, here's the front wheel. Air would go here through the coolers. Their coolers were the same as in the ground fact era. Air would come here, cooler was situated like that, and the air would exhaust out of the out of the cooler over the top of the pod. Now what's new with their pods? They were they weren't going straight to the back but tapering here. And that was the this area, the underwing, which I which I discussed in another video, what was supposed to work more because now we don't have any ground effects, all that the bottom of the car was supposed to be flat. This underwing was supposed to uh, generate the downforce, so they tapered their their um, their side pods like that, and that uh, made the air flow over that uh, underbody much more efficiently, and as well uh, it it reduced the turbulences for that uh, rear wing. Both underwing and rear wing had more work than uh, had had more work to do now because uh, that wing profile isn't uh, in, you know within that wheelbase was gone and basically that concept was not seen after an 83 and that concept you can see it till today you can see those um, any any modern formula one car has that same tapered shape that the mclaren mp4 slash one i think was it c or d i think it was c uh, pioneered in 1983. All right. Now the only the, the 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 changes to the side pods after 83 was basically they took that McLaren concept and basically uh, improved it. So uh, with McLaren you had uh, the exhaust coming at the top. The modern with modern uh, side pods and that that happened uh, from the mid 80s through the 90s. The modern side pods got smaller and the taper got more pronounced and the exhaust was not at the top anymore but the coolers were placed like that and air would go here and the exhaust air would go out from the side at the side of the pod you'd have an outlet for the exhaust and that, uh, so this way, the, the, the top of the pod would still have smooth air and, and uh, the rear wing would get then this smooth air, would not get this, you know, if, if you go back to the McLaren example here, uh, the problem with having the, uh, the exhaust air from the radiators go, come at the top, this, this exhaust air would disturb the whole important rear wing. You know, these turbulences will hit the rear wing and that's not good for the rear wing. So what they did uh, from 84, 85 onwards, like people like Ferrari and so, they had the radiators or the coolers placed like that and the exhaust air would come out from the side and this way the wing wasn't disturbed by all this exhaust air. And that concept is still seen today. Okay, so... Um, and basically, uh, uh, from, uh, from 1989 onwards, turbo engines were, were banned and those turbo engines required far more space in the in the in the in the side pods than normal cars because the turbo engines required much more coolers than a, than a normally aspirated car. Car. So that's why in in after 1989, when nobody had turbos or nobody was allowed to have turbos anymore, those side pods got smaller because the engines after 1989 required much less cooling space. So that's why you have these more pronounced. Uh, tapers here and much smaller side pods than those of the of of the of the of the mid 80s. So if you compare, for instance, uh, an, a Williams FW11 of 1986-87 and look at its side pods and compare those to a to a to a McLaren side pods of, of 1993, you'd see a huge difference. The the 93 model are much smaller, and that's not because uh, cooling got much more efficient. That's because the turbos were banned and those uh, non-turbo engines they required way less uh, cooling.